This was supposed to have been the week Donald Trump got a fresh start as president, but now he's facing major new questions about his campaign's alleged contacts with Russia. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. <laughs> Obviously, Donald Trump got off to a rough start as president, but he finally had what many pundits considered a good day on Tuesday with his first address to Congress. The speech got glowing reviews from the media, and Trump was finally able to reset the narrative of his presidency. And you know what? I have been hard on him, but I think it's only fair that we take a minute to celebrate. In fact, I got some balloons right here, and I'm going to start blowing them up to celebrate the fact that Trump finally has everything under control. We're back now with our breaking news. Attorney General Jeff Sessions, when he was still a senator and an advisor to the Trump campaign, had meetings with Russia's ambassador to the U.S., but did not disclose them during his confirmation hearings. Leading Democrats, including House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi and Senator Elizabeth Warren, are calling for Sessions to resign. too. <laughs> so obviously the timing of this latest bombshell was not good for the White House as they were trying to enjoy the success of Trump's speech on Tuesday. In fact, Team Trump was so happy that the staff's post-speech euphoria drove the decision to put off unveiling the new executive order on migrant travel. For once, we had the wind at our sails, the top aide said. We decided not to <laughs> on ourselves. Well, it turns out, when you eat KFC and taco bowls, that decision isn't always up to you. <laughs> Today, Trump went to Virginia to speak aboard a new aircraft carrier named after former President Gerald Ford. And if he was hoping the appearance would shift the narrative away from the session story, I'm not sure he succeeded. In fact, as usual, Trump seemed just slightly out of his element aboard the ship. The soon-to-be commissioned. Gerald R. Ford, USS, what a, what a place. It's almost, it really feels like a place. You stand on that deck and you feel like you're standing on a very big piece of land, but this is better than land. Now, that may have sound asinine, but those are actually the words to the Navy fight song. What a, what a place. It almost, it really feels like a place. You stand on that deck and you feel like you're standing on a very big piece of land. But this is better than land. Go, Navy! So, turns out, Trump's attorney general, who was also a former advisor to his campaign, as well as the first person in the Senate to declare support for Trump, met with the Russian ambassador, while Russia was also allegedly engaged in a campaign of cyber attacks to interfere in the election. Now, this is problematic for a number of reasons. For one thing, Sessions was asked about this very topic under oath during his Senate confirmation hearing and gave an answer that now looks like it was false. If there is any evidence that anyone affiliated with the Trump campaign communicated with the Russian government in the course of this campaign, what will you do? Senator Franken, I'm not aware of uh, any of those activities. I uh, have been called a surrogate at a time or two in that campaign, and I didn't have, not have communications with the Russians. Of course, at the time, it seemed believable enough. Surely a senator from Alabama named Jefferson Beauregard Sessions would remember meeting some Russians. <laughs> now, we don't get a lot of rooskies down to this neck of the woods. Can I get you some lemonade? You must be awfully hot underneath that big old furry hat. Now, today, Sessions announced that he will recuse himself from any investigation into contacts between Trump campaign aides and Russian officials. But when the news broke last night, Sessions' office in the White House issued a series of contradictory statements that, in classic Trump fashion, did absolutely nothing to clear things up. First, Sessions' spokeswoman confirmed that he met with the Russian ambassador, but claimed he did it not as a Trump campaign advisor, but as a senator. This is what a spokesperson for the Attorney General put out this statement just a short time ago. And I'll read here. There was absolutely nothing misleading about his answer. He was asked during the hearing about communications between Russia and the Trump campaign, not about meetings he, he took as a senator and as a member of the Armed Services Committee. You see, honey, I slept with that other woman as accountant Mike, not as your husband Mike. <laughs> it's totally different. Also, it should be noted that Franken asked Sessions if he knew of anyone in the Trump campaign speaking with Russians. And Sessions went out of his way to mention he worked for Trump's campaign and he didn't talk to the Russians. 
That's like your wife asking, do you think our son has a drug problem? And you say, no, and I don't either. It's suspicious. <laughs> so that was the first statement Sessions' office issued. Then a White House official told CNBC the meeting involved only superficial comments about election-related news. That was then followed by a third statement from Sessions himself, which said, I never met with any Russian officials to discuss issues of the campaign. I have no idea what this allegation is about. It is false. I met with him, but I don't know what you're talking about. We discussed the election, but we didn't. It was normal for me to meet with him, but everything you're saying is false. I guess we shouldn't be surprised, since leprechauns always talk in riddles. <laughs> What's like a piece that moves a land, but it's bigger than land? <laughs> now, today's session said he did not recall discussing the election with the Russian ambassador, but one of their meetings occurred on September 8th, the day after a nationally televised candidate forum on NBC, where Trump made headlines by saying this about Putin. Well, he does have an 82% approval rating, according to the different pollsters. Do you want to be time. complimented by that former KGB? Officer? Well, I think when he calls me brilliant, I'll take the compliment, okay? If he says great things about me, I'm going to say great things about him. I've already said he is really very much of a leader. I mean, you can say, oh, isn't that a terrible thing? Okay, I will. Oh, isn't that a terrible thing? <laughs> now, look, there could certainly be legitimate reasons for Sessions to meet with the Russian ambassador. It's the fact that he withheld that information from Congress that's a problem. And it comes after a series of incidents in which Trump officials, like former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, have been cagey about their contacts with Russians. Just take Trump's former campaign manager, Paul Manafort, as an example. During the campaign, Manafort was asked directly if Trump had any financial relationship with Russian businessmen, and he was so uncomfortable he couldn't even mumble his way through a convincing answer. So to be clear, Mr. Trump has no financial relationships with any Russian oligarchs. That, that's what he said. I, I, that's what I said. That's obviously what the, the, our position is. I think the words you're looking for are, humana, 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 humana. <laughs> Look at him. That's the face you make when your wife snatches away your newspaper and screams, whose earrings are these? <laughs> um, uh, they're mine. I'm in a play, and I'm a pirate. <laughs> of course, part of the problem here is that we know very little about Trump's possible ties to Russia, a debate he could settle immediately by releasing his tax returns. Instead, Trump has been just as cagey as the people around him, contradicting himself repeatedly when asked whether he knows or has any relationship with Vladimir Putin. What exactly is your relationship with Vladimir Putin? I have no relationship with Putin. Do you have a relationship with Vladimir Putin, a conversational relationship? I do have a relationship. I have nothing to do with Putin. I've never spoken to him. I spoke indirectly and directly with President Putin, who could not have been nicer. I have nothing to do with Russia, I told you. I have no deals there. I was in Moscow a couple of months ago. I own the Miss Universe pageant. I don't know Putin. I have I'm no I'm idea. Asking, I'm asking I never met death. Putin. This is not my best friend. They treated me so great. <laughs> Putin even sent me a present. Beautiful present with a beautiful note. And he put so much thought into the note, he even cut all the letters out from different magazines. <laughs> so touching. So touching slid underneath my hotel room door. <laughs> so now, with all these questions swirling about the Trump campaign's contacts with Russia and the involvement of the attorney general in that investigation, even some Republicans are beginning to call for an independent investigation. Find a very smart, independent person, put them in charge of the whole project, and say, you know, there are questions here, the country has questions, the media has questions. There may be nothing there, but if there's something there that the FBI believes is criminal in nature, then for sure you need a special prosecutor. That's how crazy things are right now. We're not even six weeks into the Trump presidency, and people in his own party are already talking about a special prosecutor. It's like you're on a third date with someone, and you're already introducing them to your divorce lawyer. And yet, on the other hand, some of the Republicans in Congress who are supposed to be looking into this matter have already been siding with the White House before the facts are even in. Take House Intelligence Committee Chairman Devin Nunez. The Trump administration recruited him to talk to reporters and debunk the Russia allegations before his committee had even completed that investigation. And earlier this week, when reporters asked him if that was appropriate, his answers were not super convincing. Why would you agree to, be, uh, to talk to reporters at the behest of the White House knowing that you're still looking into this matter. Yeah, so that, uh, that story was a little odd, I thought, um, because if you asked me to contact uh, the White House and said, hey, could you set me up with somebody at DOD or the intelligence agencies, I would say, sure. If the White House asked me to talk to you, would you think that that would be OK or not OK? What's, what's your response to that? Well, what's your response to it? 
What's your response to that? What's your response to that? You're the congressman. No, you're the congressman. What? You're fake news. You're all fake news. Look, we need a full and independent investigation to get to the bottom of this, and it's clear that Jeff Sessions cannot provide that. Congress needs to get the American people concrete answers, because so far, all we've heard are answers like these. That, I, that's what I said. That's obviously what the, the, our position is. This has been a closer look.